Welcome to another edition of CHS TV Behind the Scenes. I'm Chris Glasper, and these are my co-hosts, Brandon Jones and Cyrus Henderson. We are all seniors at Carthage High School. In this program, we will explain how CHS TV produces its football pep rally broadcast for radio and television use. But first, we would like to give you a quick tour of our television studio. We have a classroom for lectures and written work, which is where the first year classes called broadcast journalism starts out. The three of us are advanced level students, and we spend our class time producing videotapes using the equipment in our control room and studio. Inside the control room, we have two video editing systems, one for the half inch tape and another for the three quarter inch tape. We use a turntable, a reel to reel deck, and an audio cassette deck for certain occasions. And our character generator allows us to put graphics or titles onto videotape while our video switcher combines various video signals together. In our studio, you will find three cameras that are hooked into our switcher, plus a selection of lights used to light the set. We use a variety of microphones depending on our specific needs. In 1989, our teachers and some of our advanced students built our news desk, which we use on many of our productions. But now, on to our discussion of how CHS TV broadcasts our football pep rallies. Mr. Pitchford's third period broadcast journalism class starts the process on Fridays. Their main job is to prepare all the necessary equipment so that it can be moved to the gym. These students use an equipment checklist to be sure everything is accounted for. Only cameras one and two will be used. Two students work on unhooking all control cables from camera one, including the connections for the zoom and focus control, as well as the main power and video cable that is connected to the remote control unit and the switcher of the control room. Another student in the control room unhooks the other end of the main cable. At the same time, another team of students takes apart camera two. All cables and connections must be handled carefully. Both cameras are taken off their tripods. They are carried by hand to the gym so they will not be shaken and vibrated by being rolled on the long brick floor of the main hallway to the gym. This can cause unnecessary wear and tear. All camera cables are carefully stretched out and rolled up neatly, then taped with gaffing tape or masking tape to keep them from getting mixed together. Meanwhile, a team of students is busy setting up a VCR and TV monitor on a special four-wheel cart on which our instructor installed a strip of power outlets. Video and audio connections are made, as well as power connections. This VCR will record the broadcast videotape used on local radio and TV. Other items such as headsets for communicating with crew members, microphones, extra gaffing tape, a special microphone signal splitting adapter, and other accessories are loaded into a carrying case. Third period students place rolled cables onto the bottom of a cart, line up the cameras and other equipment neatly, and leave the studio when the bell rings. Fourth period reverses its lunch period on Fridays so that fourth, fifth, and sixth period can concentrate on moving and setting up equipment without being interrupted. And now, Brandon will explain what fourth period does. After lunch, these students prepare any extra equipment, such as microphone cables, which need to be neatly rolled and taped, then loaded onto the bottom of the cart, and soft lights, which are needed for a special occasion when the lights in the gym have to be turned off for a slide of video presentation. After such a program, the gym lights take several minutes to brighten up again, and our lights help us to get a better picture. As soon as every piece of equipment is ready according to the checklist, fourth period begins rolling and carrying it all to the gym. A sign reminding fifth period students to meet in the gym is posted, and off they go. By the end of the football season, CHS TV students become very efficient in moving and setting up this equipment. They must be very careful in moving through doorways since the switcher cart and the VCR are very wide. As soon as everyone and everything reaches the gym, the setup begins. The switcher and the VCR cart are plugged into the wall outlet, and the team begins to run the camera one cable through the pipe in the gym wall to be stretched down to the gym floor. A tripod and camera one are carried down to the floor where they are put into place and set up. Every connection is carefully made. Our gym bleachers stay folded up until fifth period because PE classes are using the gym space behind them. Since camera two goes at the top of the bleachers, we have to wait before setting it up. Cyrus will now discuss what happens during the fifth period broadcast journalism class. Thanks, Brandon. Fifth period begins wherever fourth period leaves us for the day. In this case, it's with setting up audio or sound equipment. 
We used two microphones, one on the gym floor and one near the band, and fade back and forth to help eliminate the echo you hear in the gym. The students unroll a long microphone cable, run it through the pipes in the gym wall, and weave it through the railing on the crosswalk until they reach the spot where the band will be. Using a tall telescoping pole as a mic stand, they mount a microphone on top and raise it high for the best sound. This pole is attached securely to the railing with gaffing tape and some extra padding to muffle vibration. The other microphone on the gym floor doubles as the PA system mic. We use a special splitter to divide the signals so that we get good, clean sound from it, and so does the amplifier from the gym speaker. Since our local radio station will broadcast our sound, we have to make it as clear and clean as possible. While waiting for time to open the bleachers, a team of fifth period students work to set up two of our studio soft lights. These will be turned on as soon as the special video presentation is over, giving us some light to shoot by while the overhead gym lights warm back up. Finally, the bleachers are pulled back and the fifth period crew can carry the camera to tripod up in two place. First, they remove it from its wheels, which are called the dolly. Once it is carried up to its spot, the tripod is set up and leveled using an ordinary carpenter's level. Camera two is brought up, mounted, and connected just as camera one was earlier. The camera two cable is run through the gym wall and up and over the gym door then up the railing of the bleachers, where it is finally connected to camera two. With every piece of equipment connected, the power is turned on back at the switcher unit, then on the cameras themselves. Chris? Thank you, Cyrus. Sixth period is an advanced class called Independent Study Broadcast Journalism. During this time, all final adjustments are made. The cameras are adjusted for the specific type of lighting used, a process called white balance. The color is matched carefully between the two cameras. Audio levels are checked for the two microphones. The VCR is checked by recording samples on tape. Brandon, what happens when the actual pep rally gets underway? Well, Chris, that's when it gets hectic. Students have volunteered to work for extra credit, take their positions, and listen to the director over their headsets. The audio people control the overall levels as well as mix the sound between the two microphones. The technical director switches from camera to camera as a director commands. Many times, due to the loudness of the Bulldog Band, the camera operator cannot hear the director very well. So they refer to a special set of storyboard script forms that give them specific shot suggestions for different occasions. All of this activity is an excellent experience for these students, some of which have only been operating this equipment for a few weeks at this time. All this is recorded on videotape so that they can learn from their successes as well as their mistakes. As soon as the school song and fight song are played, however, the pet rally is over. Cyrus will pick up the story here. Okay, Brandon. As soon as the mob of students leave the pep rally, the CHS TV crew starts quickly unhooking all the equipment and taking it down. Each person is assigned specific jobs on the weekly crew sheet. With everyone working together, it doesn't take long to gather the equipment. Once again, the checklist makes sure nothing is left out. The students form a caravan and roll everything back to the CHS TV studio before Mr. Petra checks their names off the crew list for extra credit. The equipment will be set up in the studio on Monday morning by an independent study class. Since there is less than 30 minutes left before broadcast time, we have to hurry to rehook the switcher to the character generator and do some last minute insert editing of opening graphics, end credits, and our Bulldog Productions trademark. Mr. Petra cues the tape, drives to KGAS radio a few miles away, and delivers it, usually a few minutes before airtime. Our completed production is broadcast simultaneously over the radio. And over cable channel two on television.
CHS TV students can watch their own work being televised and realize that they're producing an actual broadcast for the community. For my co-host and the rest of the independent study students who produced this edition of CHS TV Behind the Scenes, I'm Chris Glasper saying thanks for tuning in.